Thank you. Sorry for the delay and uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, uh, as always. Nice to see you all. Um, so I wanted us really to try and get into the uh, the bread and butter of the, uh, the sugya itself. Um, but before doing that, I, I realized there was one uh, one point that perhaps I glossed over a little bit and that deserves to be uh, spelled out. Now, on the on the new um, sheet that I printed, I reprinted the Rambam in Perik Tes Halacha Zion and uh, also the comments of the Minchas Chinuch uh, on this. Now, there's a number of points that the Rambam makes which are um, important for the purposes of our sugya. Um, the first thing the Rambam says is, that, or the first thing that I want to draw your attention to is, the Ramam says, So the Ramam paskins that Gaziza applies, the Malach of Gozis applies whether the Behemoth is dead or alive. Um, I, I didn't realize till I was preparing this year over the last few days, um, that this really draws us into a, a shas sugya, which is beyond my capacity to talk about uh, in the context of this year. Um, but suffice it to say that the Rambam is of the view that Gozes applies whether minachai or minhameis, and uh, there would appear to be Rishonim that argue on that. There's a Ramban in Hilchus Bechorus uh, that seems to argue on that, um, there's a Mogen of Ram in Simon Tovkov Kavov, Sif Kotten Yod Aleph, that quotes uh, um, uh, Truma Sardeshan, that seems to argue on it. So uh, there's, there's, it, it ties into a, a complicated discussion about how to learn another sugya. Um, but without going through the, the maths of sort of all the sources, the Ramam is of the view that Gozes applies even Minha Meis, and the, uh, the other Rishonim possibly uh, argue on that. Um, if we just want to look at a, a Maramakim in terms of practical halacha, um, in the Mishnah Brewer, which I printed in source eight, the Mishnah Brewer brings this point. He says, the Navaib makes us din melechas ha And he says, Chiyav shal gaziza, who bain kashagozes min achai, bain kashagozes min ha meis, afinu min So here he's quoting the Ramam, that the is of gaziza is whether you um, pick off hair or sheer wool, of a living animal or a dead animal, or even its carcass. Um, and then he says, the Dafka Goze is Chiyuv of a Kol Gavna. It's only Goze is where there's this Chiyuv Bain Minachai, but Toilesh Minachai Potter, and we'll come on to that uh, a little bit later. And just in terms of practical Alacha, he says, uh, people that wear Halam Boshim, but Oyos shall behema. Those who wear animal skins, Srikhim is Hosh, shall a Yitrushim and Aseos shall have a not to pick the hair off on them from Shabbos. So I, I don't think you see that that much anymore, but I remember people used to wear um, sheepskin coats in the past. Um, nowadays, people that wear leather, generally it's a smooth uh, leather. But if you wear a fur coat or a sheepskin coat and you pick hair off the leather, the Mr. Rua points out that one, uh, depending on, on how one does it, one may, may get into the issue of Malacha Shein Tzvi Chalukov and so on, but potentially one is doing a Malacha on uh, Shabbos. One has to be very um, careful about that. Now, this discussion about um, whether Gozes is only Minachai or even Minhameis um, is quite important in terms of defining the Malacha. And this is uh, what I meant when I said I glossed over this a little bit last time, um, because I just want to spell it out. If you hold, like the Rambam, that Gozes applies even Minhameis, then it is clear that Gozes is, is not. Um, parallel to Koitza. It isn't uh, removing something from the place from which it draws Yanika or sustenance, um, because the Chiyav is even once the animal is dead, when the hair or wool growing draws no sustenance from the uh, from the animal. If, however, you hold that Gozes only applies from Achai, then we can speculate about how similar it is to Koitza. So this is the uh, the first point that, that I wanted to make. I mentioned this in the last year, but perhaps I didn't uh, spell it out enough, clearly enough. The second point I wanted to make is that the Minchas Chinuch is of the view, and I printed this in source two. Um, the background to the Minchas Chinuch is that, uh, he's, it, that there is a sugya that discusses Gozes in the context not of Shabbos, but of uh, um, the Isra of a Bechor. You can't shear the wool of a Bechor. And the sugya and the mishnah and the, and the concepts of the is comparing Shabbos v'yomtuf to uh, b'chor. 
And again, we don't need to uh, to go into this, but his main point is that with respect to Bechor, all we need to think about is Gozes, what the parameters of Gozes are. However, with respect to Shabbos and Yom Tov, you have to also think about the Malacha of Koitza, of harvesting. Now, how can Koitza possibly apply to, um, excuse me, how can Koitza possibly apply to shearing the wool off an animal? Well, the Mishnah Brewer says, the, the Minchas Chinuch says that the Rambam is of the view that an animal is gedule karka, and therefore, um, if an animal counts as gedule karka, then um, um, you could conceivably be engaged in the malach of koitzer of harvesting if you harvest the wool or the hair of an animal. So the background to this again is as follows: um, koitzer is one of the malachas which are agricultural malachas. And therefore, only applies to Gedule Kaka. We saw as you move through the Malachas, by the time you get, to, if you think of the 11 steps to get to manufacturing of bread, by the time you get to Bishul, no one would argue that this only applies to Gedule Kaka. Cooking can also apply to things which aren't Gedule Kaka. Um, however, the earlier Malachas, Choresh and Zorea, certainly are agricultural Malachas that are done in the field and only apply to Gedule Kaka. Koitza is one of these Malachas that only applies to Gedule Kaka. Dosh, for example, threshing, we saw as Machlokas. Is it primarily in a food item or is it primarily at the agricultural stage? And the Nafkamina would be uh, whether it applies to Gedule Karka. So at some point, the production of bread shifts to ceasing to be a field malacha and becoming a food production malacha. And at that point, the malacha wouldn't only apply to Gedule Karka, to things that grow in the ground, but would even apply to non Gedule Karka. We also saw, if you remember, on Ayn Gimel and Base, a machlokus about whether animals are viewed as Gedule Karka. Now, we normally intuitively think of gedule karka as things that grow from the ground as meaning plants or uh, fruit. Nonetheless, um, we saw Rishonim that learn from the halacha perhaps of Masa Shani that even an animal might be considered gedule karka. So the Minchas Chinuch argues that if you view an animal as gedule karka, um, as perhaps might be what's implied by the idea that dosh cholev applies even with animals, then um, koitza could apply to taking wool off an animal because the animal is gudele karka and I'm extracting the wool from its mokum yunika from the place where it grows. And therefore the Minchas Hanach argues that the Rambam would hold that every case where you're gozeiz mechayim, where the animal is still alive, not only are you transgressing the malacha of gozeiz, but you're also transgressing the malacha of koitza because you're taking it from a Gedule Karka. So argues the uh, Minchas yeah. Chiruch. But if that is the case, why do you need Gozes as a Malachah? Because every act of Gozes will be an act of Kotzer. So, so this is, in a sense, why the two link together. Were Gozes to only apply to a living animal, then Gozes would be synony synonymous with Kotzer. But since the Ramam holds that Gozes even applies to a dead animal, you see that the malacha of Gozes is not a harvesting malacha, but is a separation malacha, as we saw. It's producing wool or producing skin. And therefore, it's a different malacha, which even applies to a dead animal. It happens to be that sometimes when you do Gozes, i.e. when you do Gozes on a living animal, it's also another malacha of Kota. But, it's, but so the fundamental of, nature of Gozes is a different malacha. So if we're thinking in terms of Venn diagrams, there's, there's, a, there's a large overlap between the Gozo circle and the Kotze circle, but they're not they're not synonymous circles because any Gozo's on a dead animal would not be Kotze. That's correct, yes. That is correct, yeah. I just ask, I don't quite get the logic that you're saying because an animal can can be considered Gadile Karka, then you're now jumping to say that taking um, a hair out of a skin of an animal is taking it from its uh, mockum of um, growing, but it's not the skin that's growing from the ground. I mean, the animal grew from the ground, but now it's dead. You see what I mean? So the, the two points. The, the, first of all, in, in, I, I think you're onto a good question, but the maths of how you said the question was, was mistaken. The calculation of how you said the question was mistaken. The, the Minchas <laughs> is only arguing that gozes of a live animal would be koitza, because you are extracting the wool from its place of growth 
akin to harvesting wheat from the field. If the animal is dead, then of course it's not goitzer, but it would just be goizes. However, you are correct that there seems to be a, uh, um, a question around the logic of the Minchas Chinuch. The Minchas Chinuch is saying that because an animal is gudurei karka, therefore wool, which grows from the animal, harvesting that wool could be a malacha in the karka. But this isn't correct. The animal isn't karka. The animal is perhaps gudurei karka. It lives off the ground. It grows from the ground. But the animal itself isn't karka. And therefore, to extrapolate that kaitsa, which is a malacha in the karka, should apply to things which grow from gidure karka, from an animal, doesn't seem to be correct. Now, it is true that if you pluck a fruit off the tree, you're harvesting the fruit from the tree. And you could say the tree isn't karka, the tree is just gidure karka. But we don't really have evidence that that's the malacha that's taking place. Maybe the issue is that I'm removing from the fruit from the karka, and the fruit is attached to the karka via the tree. So the idea that because kaitsa applies to karka, we could therefore say, and because an animal is gudule karka, we can therefore say that every time you harvest wool from an animal that is extracting the wool from the karka, again, seems, uh, seems to be a leap. And uh, it's not obvious that the, um, the minchas chiluch, I think you're correct that the minchas is, is extrapolating here from the fact that maybe an animal is gudule karka, so assuming that harvesting wool off an animal's back is um, is is kaita. Now again, um, this is this is beyond the, my ability and the scope of the shir to to uh, engage fully with the sugya. There, there were a number of, of uh, rias backwards and forwards brought by the achronim based upon complicated gemaras. Um, and just gemara looks at other forms of gozes and extracting things from animals, including. Um, uh, perhaps delivery of a uh, of a fetus from an animal and things like that. When you are taking things which are uh, addendum additions to an animal and extracting them from the life of the animal, so this gets into into uh, sigils which are are, are beyond uh, this topic. But again, I just want to put that out there as as a bit of chazara on coats that we learnt and with implications for this rambam about whether coats applies only to live animals or even uh, to dead animals. So this is. Um, the next point that in the Rambam, in the Duke, the Rambam, the Rambam says that it applies even to the dead animals, and the Chinuch learns that with a live animal, it will also be kaitzer. Now, I want to use the Rambam further, but before doing that, I want to uh, go to our sugya and just try and learn our sugya inside, as promised, because we, we do need to get back to the uh, to the page of the uh, of the Gemara. We spent quite a long time on introductions, but we really need to get back to the page of the Gemara. So the Gemara says as follows: Hagozes es atzema v'amalabnoi. Um, so it's three chatois. If you um, uh, um, spin wool while it's still attached to the animal on Shabbos, it's goizes. The second is Sorry? Is it attached to a living animal? Uh, <coughs> yes, attached to a living animal, yeah. Sorry, interrupt. Yeah, so. so Attached to living animals, so it would be to be the case. Achas mishum menafit. The second is because of combing, and the third is mishum the achas mishum toive. Rav Kahana ama in derech gaziza bekach ve in derech menafit bekach ve in derech tovia bekach. He says in derech bekach. So first of all, just peshat in the Gemara. What's the peshat in in derech bekach? So Rashi doesn't comment uh, directly on this, but Rashi does comment on the continuation of the Gemara. In which the Gemara says, but surely this is how they did this in the Mishkan. And Rashi explains where we see they did it in the Mishkan like that, because uh, if they read it out of the Pasuk, the Pasuk says, Tovu Esa Izim, they, uh, um, they, they, they uh, um, uh, spun the um, wool, of the Izim, the goats, and the Gemara is like, what do you mean they spun the goats? They didn't spin the goats, they spun the wool on the goats. And from that, the Gemara learns that they spun the wool while it was on the back of the goats. And the Gemara um, answers that this was a chachma yaseira, to which Rashi explains that uh, the craftsmen who built the Mishkan were particularly skilled. For such craftsmen, perhaps this is derech, the way of doing it. However, for normal people, um, this isn't the way of doing it. And therefore Rashi says, um, hediyot, ein bekach, kilach hayad. For a hediyot, this isn't the derech, and therefore it's kilach hayad. So Rashi basically learns that the... Um, the, the topic of the sukya is that it is kilachayad, 
And this is one of the Makoros for the concept of uh, Shinoi and Kelachayat. So, so learns Rashi in the Sugya. The Me'iri goes with a similar Mahalach, and I printed the Me'iri at the bottom of page one. He says, Ein dark and, and he says, a Potter Avalosa. So from here we see that Shinoi is Potter Avalosa. And uh, this is the second Diuk, I would say, in the Ramam in Perik Tes Halachazayin. The Ramam at the end of the Halacha says, um, She'ein Derech, the Ramam brings this scenario, Hitves Atsemem El Achai, if you spun the wool while it was on the back of an animal, Potter, She'ein Derech Gezizas Bekach, Ve'ein Derech Nippots Bekach, Ve'ein Derech Tzviya Bekach. Now the Ramam says Potter, and we know that in general, the word Potter means Potter Avalosa. In Shabbos, there's three terminologies. Um, mutter means it's mutter completely. Chayev means you're chayev chatos, or if you did it for mezuz, chatos shonim, then you're chayev misa. Potter means you're exempt, for which the, which, um, the Ramam understands to mean, and he says this as a klal in the beginning of Hilchah Shabbos, and the Gemara generally uses it this way, that potter means potter avalosa. It's potter that you're not chayev, so it's not chilol Shabbos minatera, but it's also um, either osa drabonon, um, or also midaraisa, but not with the full weight of being the malacha and therefore no chiyuv. So, for example, uh, um, if we saw an ein dalad on aleph chatsi sheir, if you did a chatsi sheir, it's potter of also your potter because it's below the share of the malacha. Nonetheless, it's also either drabonon because chatsi sheir is also midrabonon, or minatera because chatsi sheir also min ha tera. So here, the Rambam, uh, when he says that if you spun the wool on the back, you're Potter, he's telling us Potter Avalasa, from which we see that Lav Derech means Potter Avalasa. I'm belaboring this point a little bit because in the Gemara that's not clear cut. Um, in the Gemara, you have Rabbi Yechanan who says you are um, Chayev, and you have Rav Kahana who just says, Ein Derech Diziza Bekach, Ein Derech, etc. So he says it's not the Derech. So he's arguing with Rabbi Yechanan, but he doesn't tell us what he means. Does he mean it's not the Derech and therefore it's Mutter? Or does he mean it's not the Derech, but it's Potter Avalasa? But the Ramam uh, and the Me'iri spell this out, that it's uh, Potter Aval Osa. May, may I just, uh, with a great chutzpah, ask a question on, on Rabbi Yochanan. Uh, why, how does he get gozes? Because I can understand you would have to do the combing before you spin, but there's no geziza actually taking place in Tavaya al Gabi Behemoth. Okay, so this is an excellent question, and I, I don't know why, why it's a great chutzpah to ask, uh, to ask, uh, ask this question. It's, it's, it's an excellent question. Um, to my embarrassment, I didn't think of this question until I learned the, um, go, the Vilna Gaon, which I posted on the Sugya. Um, and you're absolutely correct. The Gemara doesn't explain where there's Gaziza at all. Now, I sort of, uh, in shoddy thinking, perhaps, assumed that there was also a Gaziza that took place. So you spin the, you comb the, the wool on the animal's back, you spin the wool on the animal's back, and, uh, and then you are Gaziza it. And somehow or other, this is uh, Lav Derech Gaziza. But it, it, Rabbi Yechanan doesn't quite spell out that Gaziza took place. Um, but it would appear that that's the assumption. This is what you did. In other words, the point is you're doing everything in reverse. Normally, the order is Gazes, then Manafates, you comb it, and then you spin it. Here, you comb it, spin it, and then you uh, are Gazes it. However, we will revisit your point, Paul. But um, at least my first read in the Gemara has completely slipped me by. And I, I just assumed that the, you know, the Gemara didn't bother spelling it out, but there was a Gozes that took place. So I'm going to leave your question, though, though it probably is the earlier question one should ask. And I'm going to ask the other question, which is, so what, what, what exactly is the Lav Derech Kach? What exactly is Rav Kahana's point? He doesn't actually tell us. He just says Lav Derech, this isn't the Derech, and therefore you're Potter Avalasa. But why is it not the Derech? So here we get really to the next point on the Sugya. Um, which is the Rabbeinu Chananel and the Rosh. And Rabbeinu Chananel and the Rosh um, both say that the issue is because you are Toilesh rather than um, Gozes. Now, Toilesh is a different way of pulling the hair off an animal. Um, it's Toilesh, it's plucking. Gozes is uh, hair cutting, it's shearing. You use shearing scissors, large scissors or knives, and you cut the wool off the animal. However, if you spin the, if you comb and then spin the thread, then it would appear that the gaziza that takes place is now plucking off these spun threads. And therefore the issue is that this is toilesh, not gozes. And uh, the Rosh explains that um, toilesh is potter with an animal, 
because it's lav derech gaziza bekach because it's not the way that you do it. However, with an oif, toilesh is chayev, and the difference is because you pluck birds' feathers, but you cut wool or hair off an animal. And the reason why we do these different things is because plucking hair off an animal is painful, and therefore the animal resists, and it's a messy business. Whereas plucking feathers off a bird, um, the bird's uh, um, attachments, the, the feathers to the attachments to the wing is through the, the sort of the, the stalk of a feather, the, the, the quill of the feather, which is um, doesn't have uh, nerve endings, but is quite uh, tough. And therefore you don't cut through it because you ruin the feather and it's difficult and you pluck the feathers from the animal and therefore um, this is the derech to do it. So it turns out that for a bird, toilesh is chayev, for a animal, Tolish is um, potter if you do it, mechaim, if you do it with a live animal. However, the Rosh spells out, if you do Tolish on a dead animal, you would be chayev, because for a dead animal, the dead animal doesn't feel any pain, and therefore um, this would be, uh, um, this would not be a lav derech bekach. And again, this is Puskins by the Ramam. He says in the third line of the Rambam in, in, in the source sheet, source one, near the end, um, the penultimate line of the Rambam, Hatolish Konof Minaif, if you pluck a feather from a bird, how is that told us Gozes? This is a told of Gozes. It's a told of not an av because it's done in a different manner. Um, nonetheless, it's a told of because its outcome is the same as that of Gozes, which is separating the outgrowth from the animal itself. And therefore, this is Tolish, not uh, Gozes. And the Chiddush of Avkahana. Is that Tolish doesn't apply by a living animal because it's lav derech because it's painful. It applies by birds and it applies by a dead animal where pain isn't a uh, consideration. So this is the Rach, the Rabbeinu Chananel, and the um, and the Rosh how they learn the the sugya why it's not the derech. Now um, I was amazed to see another mahalach on the, the sugya, and this is the view of the Vilna Gaon. Um, on the Frankel Rambam, the new prince of the Rambam, it's not so new anymore, it's uh, 10 plus years old. Um, the Frankel Rambam, they created a Likut of the Vilna Gaon on the Rambam. Now, there was never, to the best of my knowledge, there was not published previously the Vilna Gaon on the Rambam. And they obtained manuscripts of the notes that the Gaon made on his Rambam. And they combined that with um, the comments the Vilna Gaon makes in the Shulchan Aruch. Um, the Shulchan Aruch often is based on the Rambam. And the Gaon's main uh, work that he wrote on halacha is the Bio Hagra on Shulchan Aruch, and wherever there was the same language or same uh, psak in the Ramam, Shulchan Aruch, and the Gaon made the comment, they also added this into the uh, onto the Gaon and the Ramam. So effectively, they created a comment of the a commentary of the Gaon on the Ramam, um, where there wasn't one previously. Now the Shulchan Aruch doesn't pass in this Gemara. The Shulchan Aruch doesn't bring, as far as I could see, this halacha of spinning on the back of an animal, maybe because it's a very unusual and weird thing to do, and therefore it's not common enough, and the Shulchan Aruch didn't bother paskining it. But the Rambam does pask in this Gemara. And the Rambam, uh, again, this is brought in our Rambam in, uh, that, that I printed over here. And the Rambam uh, paskins like Rav Kahana, that it is lav um, derech bekach. Now, the Vilna Gaon, and let's learn through the Vilna Gaon together. I think it's worth us learning through it together because uh, it's, it's, it's a very important uh, Maramakan, very interesting Maramakan. Um, so let's have a look at the Gaon. This is the Gaon on Rambam, and I wrote in brackets Frankel because it doesn't exist anywhere else as far as I can see. It's based on the Gaon's notes on the Rambam, and, and uh, the Vilna Gaon says as follows. So he quotes the Rambam, and then he says, um, every word of the Gaon here is precious. The Gaon writes very briefly. He says this would appear to be a contradiction. So what's the contradiction that the Gaon is um, finding over here? Um, the contradiction is as follows. The Rambam says that, um, that you are chayev for the tolda of being tolesh min ha'ayf. And the, on the one hand, so you are chayev for that. On the other hand, the Rambam paskins that if you spin the thread on the back of the animal, it's lav derech geziza bakach. Now, why would it not be derech geziza bakach? So the Gaon considered the possibility of Rabbeinu Hananan and the Rosh, that the answer would be because it's Toilesh. In which case, says the Gaon, there's a stira in the Rambam, because the Rambam tells us that Toilesh is Chayev as a told of Gozit. On the one hand. On the other hand, the Rambam says that in the case where you spin it on the back of the animal, you are Potter of Alasa because Toilesh is Potter. So the Rambam has to make up his mind. Is Toilesh Potter 
or is Toilesh Chayev? Now, the Rosh would answer the question that Toilesh Min Ha'oith is Chayev, Toilesh Min Ha'behema is Potter. The Ramam, the Gaon doesn't think this is a good answer in the Ramam, because the Ramam doesn't spell it out. The Ramam just says that Toilesh Min Ha'oith is Chayev, and the Gaon thinks that had the Ramam wanted to make a distinction between Oith and Behema, the Ramam should have spelled it out. He's just, the Ramam is just giving a normal example. Normally, you pluck uh, from a bird, but in principle, Toilesh is Chayev. So this is the stira that the Vilna Gaon asked in the Ramam. In our language, effectively, the question of the Vilna Gaon is, what's Peshat in Rav Kahana? Why is Gziza love derech gozeiz b'kach? On that, the Vilna Gaon answers, im loisha perish das Rabbi Yochanan, if not that the explanation of the view of Rabbi Yochanan Gemara, of Hitzvah Semachayv Mishum Gozeiz, hainu atzaloma, shatavia yek mo gozeiz, mach ma shalei yigdaloiz. So here we get to Oid. So here we get to Paul's point. The Gaon is learning that there is no separate act of Gaziza that takes place. The only Gozes that takes place is the act of spinning itself. And the Gaon says that why the, the Gemara is, is understanding. It, the, the Gaon says, don't misread the Gemara. The Ramam read the Gemara precisely. The Gemara doesn't say you spun the thread and then you plucked it or then you cut it off. The Gemara just says you spun the thread. And Rabbi Yechonim says the act of spinning alone would be Gozes. Meaning to say that somehow spinning by itself without doing any additional cutting is gozes. How so? Says the Gaon, because the um, detachment of the, the, the spinning process means that the wool won't grow any further. It's, it's, it's uh, um, breaking the uh, source of nourishment of the, the, the fibers of the wool from the animal. Once you've spun it, it can't grow anymore. And therefore, this is the malacha of gozes. So it's not that Rabbi Yochanan is saying there's an additional act of Gozes that takes place. He's arguing that the Tevia, the spinning itself, is the act of Gozes. And that Rav Kahana says, love to it's not a normal way of Gaziza to, to twist the, the fibers till they, uh, it breaks the, the uh, pathways of nourishment from which the fibers draw their energy from the path. Now this Gaon is very interesting because the same Rambam that the Gaon is learning, two lines earlier, says you're higher for gozes even from a dead animal. Which means to say that gozes is the act of physical separation, not the act of, 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 of cutting it off from its source of growth. Because a dead animal, the wool doesn't have a source of growth, as we just said. Nonetheless, here, the Gaon is willing to consider the possibility that it is his gozes because you're cutting it off from its source of growth. So I don't really know what to say in the Gaon, other than evidently the Gaon thought that both are options for gozes. Gozes means separating the fiber from the animal, the, the additional the addendum from the animal itself. This could be by physically separating, which is shearing or cutting, and it could be by um, separating it from its source of growth, um, such that it is no longer attached physiologically or biologically or unique wise from the animal. So this seems to be the path that the Gaon treads. That the Gaon says um, shearing is any separation of the fiber or the, the, the hairs or the wool from the animal whether physically separating, in which case it is uh, um, gozes, or whether separating the growth, in which case it's also uh, gozes. This would appear to be how the, uh, um, the, gon, the Gon would learn. The second explanation the Gon says, even though you do do a separate act of gazeza afterwards, since you spun first, so again, it's not the toilage that makes it, it's the mere fact that you spun. Um, Gozes is cutting uh, raw wool off an animal, not cutting off um, uh, spun wool. And it would appear that the Shah Hatsian, which I printed in Source 8, um, also learns like this. Because the Shah Hatsian says from the Stimas Losh and Harambam, it, it doesn't seem like the point in the Rambam is that you're not using a keni. In other words, you're toilesh, you're plucking rather than cutting with a knife or scissors. It would appear from the Stimas Losh and Harambam that the Rama meant whether with a keli or not, in which case the Chofit Chaim, who didn't see the Gaon, nonetheless was nochis to the Das of the Gaon. He read the Rambam like the Vilna Gaon did and didn't believe that Pshat in the, in the Rambam is like the Roshan or the Yonchananel, that it's because there was toilesh plucking the yard as opposed to cutting, which is shearing, but, the, but rather that the Chiluk is something else. And the second suggestion of the Gaon is just the mere fact that you're doing gozes after, um, after being tovah. So that uh, concludes, I think, the reading of the first part of the sukkah.
the Machlokas Rabbi Yochanan of Kahana, and three explanations as to why Rabbi Kahana says it's Lav Derech, either like the Rosh and the Rach because you're Tzolesh, or like the Ramam that it's not Tzolesh, but as the Gan argues, either it's just the mere act of spitting is the Gozes itself, or doing Gozes after spitting isn't the Malacha. Can I ask a bit of an aside? Yes, sure. There's a bit of an aside there. What, what is the benefit of spinning wool when it's still attached to the live animal? What, what, why would one want to do it? Or is it just there as a way to, you know, just purely to explain the process, even though it's not beneficial in any way? I saw, I, I can't remember um, where, I saw in one of them, unfortunately, they say it improves the quality of the thread uh, somehow. I, I don't know how it does that, but maybe because the thread is still drawing nutrients from the animal until the moment of spinning, um, it's, it's a better quality thread. I, I don't know more than that, though. It's, it's okay. a strange thing. Thank you. Thank you. It's a strange thing, yeah. Okay, I wish everyone a, a good evening. Thank you very much. Okay. Sunday, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amazon. Uh, Thank you. Uh, okay.